our students, the art teachers, back again with another lesson. And this was a request that someone asked me, and I gave it some thought, a lot of thought, a lot of thought, and I figured out how to do it. So let's go to the drawing table and put some texture on something. All right, yes, I look tired because you'll find out in a second. All right, let's go. All right, art students, we're back with another lesson. And this one, someone asked me not too long ago to show him how to draw texture. Now, first of all, you got to forgive my voice. I mean, I just jumped out of bed and uh, I'm trying to drink something warm right now for my, my, my throat. Because as I said, I just jumped out of bed. Most times I have my ideas when I first wake up. I guess maybe the spirit speaks to me and tells me how to do stuff or how to help. And when people ask me for things, I don't like to, to, to tell them no or I don't know how to do it. You know, especially, well, let's just say I don't like to say no to people when they ask for um, knowledge. You know, I mean, I might not possess all the knowledge in the world, but I'm, I'm really happy to share what I know. So let me show you a couple things about texture that I know. You know, I'm not some master, uh, you know, that graduated from texture school, but I'm showing you what I know. And let's do it with the pencil this today. Let's work with a pencil. So a lot of it is thought process. When you when you draw, anytime you draw a comic, most of it is, is thinking. I always say it's 70% no, <clears throat> knowledge and 30% skill. It's not that you can draw something so well, but it's like, how do you draw it and why do you draw it? And you know, where would you draw it? So if I drew this right here, right that, right that, like that, you would just say, okay, that's a crooked rectangle. But how would you know if that's plastic or metal or glass or wood, um, you know, iron, copper, whatever. So a lot of things, when you draw them, we recognize them. You know, and, and I asked them, are you drawing comics? Are you just you drawing like life um, pictures from, from life? So what is still life? But the guy's drawing comics. So, but naturally, because we have seen stuff like millions of times, we know what it is. So if I drew this, you would know what it is. It's, it's a little teacup, little mug for a teacup. I don't know what's up with your camera. It's early morning. Let's see. All this black around it and you don't want to focus. So right off the bat, we if you ever drinking any tea or coffee, you know what these things, these are kind of like these ceramics. They're, they're, they're not made of plastic. Uh, they're not made of wood. They're not made of steel. So right off the bat, you realize or the, the viewer knows, oh, this is like a ceramic mug, okay? And one thing we like to do is shine stuff. We really love to shine our shiny stuff. Everything we do, we coat it with, you know, lacquer and varnish and so forth and so on. So, knowing, seeing something, you'll know what it is right off the bat. Like, let's just do this. And... You know, that's a brick pattern, you know, without even having to zoom in on it, you'll say, okay, that's, those are bricks. So if your character was standing right here, you know, that was a brick wall behind him. So you wouldn't really have to worry about that. Another thing is how close is the thing that, um, you're going to show right up the bat, how, how close, you know, do you have to put all that texture into this thing? Because we already know that's a brick wall. We know what bricks are made of. This is not a steel brick wall. It's not a wooden brick wall. It's a rock brick wall or mortar brick wall. So some things have natural patterns and some things, like I said, we love to shine it and paint it and cover everything up. So, you know, that's a given. So this thing, this right here, you know, we, we would put like some a little bit of shine into it because of all of the varnish, not varnish, but the, the, what do you call that? The coating that we put onto it. And then we'll know, you know, it's a ceramic kind of mug. Even if you put a little dish under it, you know, it wouldn't be like a metal dish. It would be the same material. So, you know, that's a given right there. You don't really have to, to 
put all this detail into it. I mean, you might want to put texture in some things, and we'll get into that later. But right off the bat, the mind knows. Now, let me do another one of these here. And maybe a third one. So if this thing was there, you wouldn't know what it was until you actually did a couple things. You have to add some either color, shine, texture, size. So let's just say I did this and that. So, okay, right off the bat, you know that's not just a little piece of paper here. You know, it's something and it's got some, some, some thickness to it. Now, if I curved it, I'm just looking at it. If I curved it like this, and I curve this around just 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 because I'm, I'm I'm seeing it that way. And somebody out there is probably wanting to, wanted to always know how to draw one of these. And you put some lines here. Then you have a book. If you see that, you have a book. I have to keep looking at this monitor because this camera is low. Let me see if I can adjust it real quick so that I can show you guys. So you have a book, you know, that's just, that's just something I just real quick. Now there are certain things that have natural um, texture to it. And some things don't, where's my pencil? This is square again not a book now some things you have to look with the naked eye you have to really look at it and and see it because there's no getting around it so like if I did let's say this here let's just say this You say, oh, okay, that's a block of wood because wood does have a natural grain to it. It has its own pattern to it. I don't want to say even texture or pattern. A pattern, not, not texture. But a lot of times we'll take wood and we'll paint it. You want know, to say we'll, we'll put varnish and shellac and so forth on it. But wood has its own natural shape to it and inner texture to it. And that's just something you have to study for yourself because. Uh, the thing that I do when I do wood is the first thing I'll do is there's there's that knot there's that little knot in wood it's, I guess it starts out from the don't don't quote me I might be crazy wrong it starts out from the seed and it just grows from around that little piece right there and then you have the pattern that grows around it sometimes it'll be close to one edge like say at the top and it'll get uh, further away at the bottom edge. And then maybe it'll start growing out more and then it'll start deviating and taking crazy shapes like that. And then it's, it kind of like just grows outward. And then you may have just another piece of something in here just because I'll throw it in there because I don't want everything to look like it's just going down into a hole. And then the same thing I'll surround that. And then if you flip it to the sides, so if these lines are going around like this, when you cut it, they're still going to be going around the side of it like that. So that's something you're going to have to study. So I think wood would probably be one of the only things that has um, this some kind of uh, recognizable pattern to it or recognizable design to it. So... As I say, get your piece of wood and study it. Now, I've got a couple pieces of, of just um, reference. And this is a uh, massager. It's like a massage. I call this a war wagon because this thing, it hurts like hell when you, because it got these little wheels on it. But if you look at this, the texture of it, you'll see it has that pattern that goes around like that. And, you know, wood just has that. Trees just have, have that. So this doesn't have that knot in it. 
but it has that, that pattern even like I say even when you cut it from the side it goes around like this and then when you cut it from the side it's still going to get that pattern so as I said wood you're going to have to really study wood and it's dusty too because I haven't used it in so long so something like this where's my pencil again we wouldn't know what that is so let's give it like this like this one a, a little thinner now if I did something like this give it kind of a shine to it right off the bat you'll see it's either two things it looks because it's shiny and it's flat it's probably either glass or some kind of metal but usually if we're doing anything let's do this if we're drawing something we'll draw it so that people can recognize it so if I did that and I put a little thing behind it and I just did a little image inside it maybe I darken that image because you can't see it you would say oh that's a frame that's a frame and then of course because this shine is here is reflecting off something you would naturally say oh that's glass because it's of its it's um that reflection that shows on it because glass really doesn't have that pattern it doesn't have a, a texture to it well i keep saying pattern it doesn't have a texture to it because it's smooth just like a lot of things it's like if this was a wood table like this black here is just the lacquer on a wood table my tabletop my drawing tabletop but you don't see that um this this pattern going through it because as I said we like to stain stuff and paint it and cover it and make everything smooth that's just us as humans so that would be glass and if unless you know you did something like broke the glass then you would automatically say oh okay that that's glass you know but still it, it does not have a texture to it it's the pattern of how things are shaped pattern of how things are shaped did you just say that as I said it is still early it is very early it depends on how thick this glass is you'll see some of the sides of the glass like that so this glass had to be pretty thick so let's continue this forgive me if I push it off because I'm so used to having my arms so far up that, that's the comfortable point. If it's too far down and uncomfortable. All right, so again, I'm just gonna angle this, angle it, Brian, angle it. So let's just say you were gonna do some steel or metal. Again, all that is is a box. So usually nobody has just some steel or metal just like laying around if this was like a wall or something you would probably tend to have like some rivets or something through that metal yeah, i know somebody can say oh that's flat dice but then you metal also has that shine to it kind of like um what was i say glass but before i do that let's let's do this let's do this in a, a little better because I, I, as I said I have examples yeah, like yeah. so let's say these are two spoons poor excuse for spoons but these are two spoons one of them is plastic one of them is metal so how would you uh, tell which one is which and again of course it would have that shine to it let's just say this whatever you have whenever you have something metal it's going to have that reflection it's going to reflect somehow some way the light and it's going to bounce back so you're going to have that 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 pattern so a lot of people that want to draw metal you just have to think what's what's um what's there you know that's going to reflect that light or what's there around it that's going to give it that shadow not reflect that light slow down brian 
Let's see if you have like an edge or something. But usually if there's a, there's a person standing here, you're going to get that reflection of that person. If there's a hand holding it, you're going to get some reflection of that hand, especially if you're coloring it. You're going to get some of that, you know, that, that tan or that brown or that, that pink or whatever, you know, that color off of that person. Now, something plastic like that is not going to have as much reflection. You might have that shadow, but you're not going to have that reflection pattern. So I would just keep it really simple like that. And then you can say, oh, that's that's a plastic spoon. That's a metal spoon. Not, not even too much. Um shadow or reflection on it and it would be the same way with metal like um these bolts that or these rivets let's just let's just do this just to make it a little easier you just want to go through And of course, as I say, as I said, as I said, whatever is around it, like if it's on the ground, you might have like some reflection from the ground or the shadow from that ground. Something that's way, way back off of here, you might have some of that reflection off of that too. And then just maybe some light source bending. So anything that's shiny is going to have that some type of reflection on it if you're drawing like armor or you know a nice new car or something and then you also have to know the um what do you call that where well, i have a car here yeah i have a car in my bedroom it's dusty it's all dusty yes it's dusty so let me wipe it off you have to know the the shapes 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 and all this stuff is reference. It's good to have a reference whenever, but right off the bat, you see the shine. You see the shine from it. Now, you also see like the dip in the hood. Where is it at? You see the dip in the hood here. You see the dip in the hood here. Uh, if I turn it, you can see like there's a dip in the door. So this is where your, your shadow and uh, your light is going to come from. So if this is, this is there's a this and there is a dip like this. Then you're going to have more shadow down in this part here. Maybe not solid shadow, maybe just you have your, your feathering. And you're going to have maybe a little shadow here. Your light is going to be up here. And you might have light here because if it goes around like this, light here. And then more shadow at the bottom. So you have to remember your cuts. I guess that's the word for it. In whatever it would be metal, unless it's flat. But again, how close of a view are you seeing this? Are you seeing like the, the, the um, are you seeing the close up of some newly made robot head? Then you would go ahead and, and you, where your cuts are, you have your shadow, uh, you're gonna have your light, light and shadow. And then of course you're going to have how the shape usually it like the spoon you it's going to curve things are going to curve around because it's it's not flat like this it's flat so you have that straight line but when it's curved like that you're going to have that curve so whatever lights whatever is reflecting you're going to get that curve and that shows that it is a it's, it is a round object and if you have that, that dip here. So, as I say, what is it? Is it flat? Not flat. How close is it? Is, how close are you, you drawing this thing? If it's a panel with buttons on it, it could be buttons and an elevator panel or something, and you got to show the hand and the finger, and it's all bloody and whatever, but it's got to push the elevator button. Understandable. Then you want you know, some kind of texture, some kind of pattern, but it would be, you would also have that reflection of the hand and maybe the person, you know, about to push the thing. So this one here, <clears throat> what was I saying here? All right, so we did wood, wood, glass, glass, 
metal. Um, I'm not going to say plastic because, as I said earlier, you're not just going to draw something and just leave it out. Everything that you draw has to have a purpose, whether it be a wall or a door or a, a cup or a um, whatever television. Most most people, we will know, we will understand what that thing is made of and is not made of. I'm not going to draw a flat screen television and it's not going to be made of wood. You know, most times it's, it is plastic, but, you know, it's not going to be made of high grade, you know, titanium. So right off the bat, there's really no need for that. Um, a lot of texture, especially if it's in the back room. Here's my character. Can you see that? Here's my character. He's talking to another character right here. And on the back wall, here's my flat screen TV. And maybe underneath of it is like a dresser. The way things are made, as I said, we, we kind of know what, what um, material they're made from. I'm not gonna have a plastic dresser or uh, a steel dresser. So here's my dresser, here's my two characters. All right, I'm going to ink because I'm just going to ink them. And there's my dresser and my TV in the background. Now, let's just say there is something on the TV. They're talking, but then there's like breaking news, breaking news. And then the guy comes on the TV and is holding up some paper or whatever. You know, oh, the elections are in, you know. He didn't win, you know, so right off the bat, if this is my panel, this is my panel right here. There's no need for me to try to put texture in this dresser, this wood texture in this dresser, because I'm taking away from, you know, what's happening. There's no need for me to try to put any texture in this television, this flat screen television, other than that frame that goes around it. How big is the thing that you're drawing? You know, you don't always need it, like I say, unless you're just drawing something close up. This is the robot head. I destroyed the robot. This is the robot head. Okay, so now you want to put that, that reflection in that to show, yeah, it's metal. But you don't want too much feathering, and especially in something metal. You just want solid piece that kind of curves around or solid shadow that curves around whatever indentation what's the opposite of indentation extentation that that shows same as a spoon you won't see any feathering light in the spoon you won't see any of that it's just solid um line solid straight lines all right so this thing here i don't think we got all of it let's do the bricks let's go back to the bricks because a lot of people will do brick walls you know the pattern of bricks. If you don't know the pattern of bricks, I'm going to show you the pattern of bricks. Pattern, pattern, the way they lay bricks. You have one brick here, space, one brick here, space, one brick here. You have that mortar in between bricks. I used to draw bricks like this. I mean, I, I would draw them like this. And then another layer of bricks on top like that. So that, those were my bricks until I kind of realized. So, you know, you have to have that, that mortar in between the bricks. So you also have a center brick. You have these three bricks, then you have in the center, you have another set of bricks. It's gonna to go to the center of that brick. Same thing here, you're just gonna to go to the center of that brick. Then you're gonna have another brick that's gonna to go to the center of this next brick. Same thing here, you're gonna follow that. This line's gonna come up here, you're gonna have this brick in this brick it's going to go to the center of that next brick so if you have one here you can just use your ruler and measure and it's going to go to the center of that brick this is going to be right here so I'll move this over a little bit more to the center of that brick to the center of the next brick so then you have a, a wall pattern like this one you know any bricks depending on if you have your red bricks or you have your cinder blocks. What does a cinder block look like? What does a cinder block look like? A cinder block is, how does it look like? How does it look like? What does it look like? It's I'm trying to show you from the best angle. 
is going to be long, and I think it has those inside. Okay, it's squared out, first of all. You have your square pattern, and then you have your center shelf inside of it like that to give it that more strength. Right through your cup, let's do this. That's the shape of your center block. So, if you see the front of it, it's gonna look like that. And your regular brick is just like that, rectangle like that. Now, if you're doing a wall, as I said, is it a brick, is it a center block? They're gonna be bigger. Center block's gonna be bigger. So. If I'm doing bricks, there are no such thing as smooth, glassy bricks, unless you have glass, you know, glass, glass bricks or gold bars. It's not going to be smooth. They will always, you have to think of stone. They will always have some kind of chips or um, basically chips in it. So if I'm doing brick wall, and that's probably the only time I'll do texture on something unless it's wood is I will have like just some kind of like hole in it. Just little specks of something in it. And you know, some some when you drop it, you know, some of the some of the edges, they try to keep the edges intact though, but you know, you have like just a little piece that's fallen out. Just some random holes in it. Some of them I keep halfway clean, some of them not. But I don't, I don't do like this, like that. To me, that's more something smooth when you're doing larger, when you're doing just like lines like this. I would do that in a glass door or a metal door or something like that. But since it's stone, it's, it's parts, of, parts of it are gonna chip away. From wear and tear, weather, people throwing stuff against it gunshots so yeah I just do like little erosion marks not too many space them out And I'll keep it like in more of a round kind of uh, pattern, some dots. As I said, but not not too many. And if if it's a far away, if it's a close brick, or if my character is like right here. And the brick wall is here. Yeah, I'll do just a, a few patterns, a few, you know, marks. Just to give it, you know, that texture, because as I said, you don't want no, you no know, straight, you know, shiny brick wall. And maybe I have one brick like chip more than the others. If he's in an alley or, you know, an old uh, section of um, the city, then, yeah, the, you know, the more, the better. Or just shows you, gives you, gives him an idea, gives you or the reader an idea of where that person could be at. So if this is the first page, if this was my opening page and I did this, the first thing you would probably say, depending on how many chips and holes that, that are in bricks, in the bricks, you could say, oh, this guy's probably in a back alley. Especially if there's a lot of shadow. You know, now, if he was, you know, wearing a, a nice little suit. You might question, okay, well, this guy, you know, you still probably think he's in the back alley because of the way the, the bricks are. 
but yeah, a lot of that's what I say. A lot of this is like a thinking. It's a it's a thinking thing. When you start doing comics, you have to think about you know, okay, now how could and how can I get the reader to understand? Because it's all about the reader. People want to develop their skills so they can be the best. Oh, it'll be the best. Now, if you're just drawing pinups and posters, yeah, be the best. But if you're trying to convey a story, then you're going to have to be able to put these elements into the story, put these elements in the right place in the story, put them in the right time in the story so that you can understand or the reader can understand what's going on before you know you even put any dialogue to it. So if I had this guy standing like right here and he had like a nice suit, you would like, okay, well, why is this guy here? But if I put like some, you know, some gunshot holes around him and he's in his brick. Then you would, you would. You would gives you it gives you a little extra something to think about. Still, the location wise, you would think, okay, this is probably like some back alley because this guy's getting shot at and there's holes all around these bricks, so they deliberately missed him. And then there's like a crack in the brick, so like if, if it hits the brick, it's going to hit right here, but it's not always going to be a round circle. And it's going to crack that brick. So even even larger, so you can see. Here's that where that bullet hit. And it's going to crack that brick. Like that. Kind of like a spider web. And it's going to crack out. And that also depends on the material as well. But if you have the flat wall like this and that bullet hits it it's going to go in to that wall it's a bad example Brian bad example you have to draw a concave kind of shape to show so basically as I said it's a thinking thing it's a thinking thing now what was it going to do this, this, I never thought about something for that. Okay, so you have the metal, you have the metal, you have the wood, you have the plastic. Now let's just say fur. Let's say you want to do something, some animal, furry animal. Forgive my furry animal drawing. And it depends on how shiny this guy is. He'd have more. He'd have more, just like the spoon. The spoon is shiny, but it's it's if it's not that shiny. But if you make it shiny, 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 you'll have a whole lot more. Um, lines lines and light and get off this robot bro get get off this robot so yeah what was i gonna say oh ammo here's my crazy animal crazy dog animal that's a dog's nose dog's eyes so you wanted to make it furry or fuzzy now why in the world would you want to do that unless you're just drawing a lot of close-up dogs let's say if you're just drawing life from life still life or something like that i can understand that but just like hair um depending on how long or what type of dog or what kind of fuzz the hair is going to go in patterns it's going to lay down And it's going to go around and that's a lot of work the shortness of the hair the direction of the hair where it goes so if you're drawing a horse or something like that you know but as i said you have to know where the um The ins and out, the bulges, the muscles, and so forth go. And to make this round, I'm going to have to round it off a lot. So dogs not going to have long hair like that. Some dogs may have long hair like that, but short hair creatures. Yeah. 
because that hair lays down, it's going to be like that. It's just, it's a lot of work to do something like that. And then you have your, your darker hair or your, your, this is your shadow within the hair to make it look more, what's the word? I just completely lost that word. So on the thing you have, I think they have that muzzle. And I have a little toy. Give me a second. I'll snatch that toy out. You know, we've all had, we've got pets. So just look at your pet. If you got a pet, you'll see which way your, the hair and stuff goes. Because there's that center line in the snout. Let me get that toy. All right, so I don't know, you can be able to see this because the camera wants to go and blur, wants to go critical on me. There you go. So this is a realistic kind of a toy too, but you see the way like the hair goes in that certain pattern. Let's see if I can get close, close, close. Short hair in the face. Where's my camera lens? I don't know if it's going to focus. So like just concentrate on the back here. So that's a lot of line work. You just have to know where that hair, the pattern of the hair goes. And then, <clears throat> then uh, you have your, your hair texture. So if you're doing, you know, uh, something with just hair on top, same thing. Somebody with like a crew kind of crew cut. I don't do just hair all with just one little hair all of one little hair one little thing of hair all the way around i kind of like break it up just because it's easier on the hand and then you can get like multiple directions of this hairy thing and then get some shadow in between that as well some darker hair or sprouts. I don't even call it hair, just kind of like sprouts in there to give it that pattern. You know, it's like if somebody got the, that, that crew cut, you just you just came out of the army and your hair starting to grow back. Or maybe the person, you know, got burnt, his face got burnt, and then, you know, this, this is hair, what hair he has left and, you know, still smoking on his head. So, yeah um let's do this which is really important here let's just say this come on brian you know how to draw this thing let's draw another one okay so we have two t-shirts here Remember, one is like uh thick cotton one is thin cotton the way to tell that is the amount of wrinkles and folds that are going to be in that shirt. Now, if you want to put some kind of texture to, or pattern, I'm not going to say texture pattern to that. And this is something I was going to say with metal. Sometimes they'll stamp metal. I know I'm jumping, I'm jumping. It's just me. Like this, this little piece of flash, like, look at the camera. You see how they, I don't know if you can show that. Come on camera, be nice. Let's see if I can put something behind it. The texture, they stamp this metal. One is to give it grip, but a lot of times metal does have that kind of, a, some type of pattern. If you're walking on it, especially, um, you know, if you have to hold it, they'll put some kind of texture pattern and doing that would be up to you. But you have to get it, you know, mathematically correct somehow and you just have to look at how different patterns I mean this is not the pattern there but you have to look at some the way they would stamp metal and you'd have to do this whole thing with this kind of crazy type pattern whatever pattern you decide to do and this is it's, I forgot what this is called it's called each pattern has its own name to it it's just, I think this is more like the diamond shape. I, I don't know, but you know, that that's, to me, that's a lot of work. 
unless you're drawing like from life. So something else you think about when you're doing metal, you know, like stairs or railings. I think those stairs are going the wrong way. And then you have your railing, however, and this is just right off the head, right off the head. And then the stairs, sometimes they have those, um, that fence kind of, which is, this is totally wrong. Those diamond kind of cutouts and steps so you won't fall down, you know, you're going to, especially metal, metal, um, steps and then usually rails are smooth but I mean you could put some kind of pattern in it like maybe every few so you have something to grip on as I say it's a it's a thinking game when you're drawing comics and when you're creating something it's a thinking game so going back to this fuzz real quick let me grab this this, this is a tennis ball tennis ball we all know what a tennis ball is if you have two people here You know, you know, with their tennis rackets, W I W I L S O Wilson, you know, so then you know that this ball here is a tennis ball. Uh, it's a tennis ball pattern. A tennis ball pattern is like that. You know, that's they're playing tennis. So this is really this hair is really short on something like this. So it would be even shorter than that. So drawing a tennis ball. If I'm drawing, if I have to draw a tennis ball real close up, I'll just use like a lot of dots. Surat, that was the artist that painted dots, he used dots to, to do his shadowing. And I did a couple drawings like that. Let me tell you, it takes forever. To do this. When you're using just dots to show the texture of something. If I can find it, and if I'm not lazy, I'll show you the picture I did of, of a woman using like 90% dots. I think on her lips, I think I went, I just got tired and I did her, did her lips like one, one piece, a traditional way. So you would use these dots to, you know, convey something sh really short hair or fuzzy. And then if, you know, you make it darker, around the edge to give it that light and shadow thing so it would look better if I took some of these lines out so that you can see what I was saying let's see if I can get a close up of this back you go tennis ball you have these dots and yeah, that's something like really short or really fuzzy. And if you wanted to do a dog like that, you could do a dog or, or, or an animal like that too. But instead of just dots, I would do just a little, I would pull it. Like if I'm doing, if zooming in, I would pull it more like this. But they would be really shorter, almost like doing the dots, but I would just do a little pull to it. And that could be, you know, a fuzzy animal, something, something that has really short hair versus something with the, you know, the half long hair, just, just a dot, but just you flicking, you're putting it down, you're flicking that dot just a little bit, just a little bit, not too much. So shirts. Okay. So now if I did this shirt and I have my shirt, uh, my wrinkle patterns, because all clothes take on a, a 
the same pattern where, and it's usually where you where your joints move at, like your arms. You're gonna have a wrinkle there. If you got a nice, you know, chest, you're gonna have a wrinkle there. If it's tight, you see it on the abs. But let's just let's just throw some. And it's not wrinkles; it's folds. It's folds. Here's a cloth. The same thing with the with the. Um, if I'm gonna put texture, wow, you did not like that, did you? Did you? You did not like that. These are just basically would be like little dots, these little dots. If I, if you want to do, you know, something, but there's always stitching. That's something I want to get into in, in a few seconds, stitching for texture. So I'll do this and let's just say it's going to wrinkle around here or wrinkle, wrinkle. I always say wrinkle, but understand what I mean by wrinkle. Wrinkle is just, what's a wrinkle? These are folds. These are like folds compressed. When something pushes together, it's flat. And when you push it together, they kind of like a compressed fold. So that's what I mean. So if this thing was like hanging over, over me, you know, or if my finger was sticking up, they would come into these folds. Yeah, not wrinkles. Wrinkles are just, you know, when you have your stuff laying around and it just, those folds harden up and then they won't come out. So let's do a couple more. These folds. And one fold leads to another fold, which leads to another fold, which leads to another fold. For instance, if I have a, um, if I have a, this is flat. I'm trying to, how I can explain that. If I have a one fold in here, the center fold right here, this little center fold, you have the in, out, in, out, in, you're gonna have an out, in, out, out. So one always leads to another. So if I have like this little inside center fold, it's gonna, this mountain, this is gonna lead to another one, which is gonna lead to another one, which is gonna lead to another one, which is gonna lead to another one, like right here, there, so over the top of there. So these, these compressed wrinkles, when you have one, it's like having a mountain. It's got to go down. That valley, it's going to be a valley. And when you get that valley, it's got to be another mountain and another valley. So if I'm doing all of this in this shirt, these all these compressed wrinkles, and then I do like this. And that shirt, you can tell which one is thinner and which one is thicker by the amount of I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again wrinkles that are in that shirt. So if you have one that has something like leather versus uh cotton, number one it's gonna be thick. You're not gonna get that many wrinkles. You're gonna get a few folds, very few folds because leather is thicker and then you're gonna have more of a shine with the leather somehow well majority of this will be black. And let's just say this, and you're gonna have that light. You're gonna have more light. I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna color this. You would have to color it around the high points, uh, or should I say the mountains in those folds. So, that would be more your leather it's going to be reversed let's see this is high this is low and of course you're going to have some kind of light leather is always going to have that light on the top on the highest point should i say so find your wrinkle patterns or your folds keep them white and then have their shine come through your um, material, whatever whatever texture. I just lost that. I don't know why I did that. So yeah, this is gonna be, that's how you would do leather without so many wrinkles, unless it's really thin leather, the cheap pleather is what it's called. 
I'm not gonna sit here and color this whole thing. But you you kind of understand the the difference between you know thin and thick material. And as I said, there's always if this was the collar of that shirt, then you have that sewn pattern somehow, some way. And that's where you get into good detail of stuff. If you're drawing clothes, you know, you want to put some kind of like patterns in there. You know, when you when you sew something, you fold they fold it over and of course they stitch it here. And that's gonna give these these um <clears throat> I don't know what these lines are called. That's the same thing I kind of do when I draw something. So if I draw a belt, and here's your shirt sticking out. You have these tuck in kind of um, folds, wrinkles. And remember, I said one. If this is the valley, these are the valleys. It's going to lead to a mountain, and I, and then of course that's going to lead to another valley, which leads to another mountain. So whenever I tuck something in, if this is my belt, whenever I tuck something in, it's gonna it's gonna come out. I I don't, I don't have anything to actually show you guys. Let's see if if, if I put it. I don't know if I, if I kind of squeezed it. Uh, let's try this. So this thing is where's my hand? This thing is so we say round, and this my thumb and my hand represents the belt if I put it in tight you see how that, that underneath there you get these here these little triangle things because it's tucked in and it's also it's going to come out it's not going to be flat it's going to squeeze so it's going to come out right here at this at this edge here it's going to come out and go up so that's why I when I draw because in my universe there's always belts same thing here it's going to come out and you're going to have those little triangles from where it's tight at and these are the valleys so of course you're going to have the mountains which leads to a valley which leads to a mountain which leads to a valley which leads to a mountain but you don't want to really put too much wrinkle into unless the material is really thin so this video is now 53 minutes Mine is editing. I think I had to cut maybe once. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep you guys here long long enough. So um what I'm saying, once you do clothes, if you're doing like clothes designs, the best way to do that is remember your your folds and your soles. Folds and soles. Your folds and what are these things called where they stitch it up? I guess stitches, stitches. And then that would make for a nicer uniform especially if you have um, like shoulder pads or something here and you can have just stitching right here of course I say in the shirt you have your extra lines here and it just it just looks good when you have a character and maybe just like some kind of little belt here that goes down here and it's buttoned right there you can have those stitches on the side Just as much detail in it as you can. Just remembering how clothes are made. They're always stitched. Usually they're, they're folded so they just won't be hanging loose. And then your wrinkles and some type of pattern in your folds. So, going over everything that I wanted to do. Thinking about this stuff. So, remember, um, the, the first rule is... How close is this going to be? How close are you going to see this particular thing? Are you going to be close up of this frame? If you can, most frames are, are painted and lacquered. So you're going to have that shine anytime something is painted and lacquered up. And, you know, you're going to have that shine on it. I mean, if it's natural, then you might have that, you know, that wood pattern on it. But when you do that, it just looks naked and natural like that, you know, because... Yeah, it just looks naked and natural, but a frame usually has a nice shine to it. It's a thinking man's game. You have to think about stuff and get as much reference as you can. Look in your room and, and look at your dresser, look at your TV, look at your table, look at all of that stuff and see, oh, did they paint it? Is it shiny? Is it just lacquered? Uh, look at your car in, in the light or, 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 or pictures of a car. So the more reference you have, the better, because that's the way we do. So wood, glass, metal, as I said, metal is going to be... Um, 
flat unless they stamp that some type of pattern in it. Um, you got your bricks, two type of bricks you have, and this will be the same thing, same thing, same type of bricks. You have your little um, texture in it, which is just, you know, just dots. Don't over, don't over dot it. Just a few here, maybe a crack or something here or there. Um, you have your glass. Glass is going to be smooth with that reflection. So is metal. Metal is going to have some kind of reflection to it. You don't over reflect it depending on what, what is in front of it. Um, your car. Your car is going to be reflected because of the, the, the ins and outs of your car. So if they had that dip in that hood like this, you know, you want to, that little shadow here. It's going to come around. It's going to be the high point. This light's going to hit here. You're going to get a little shadow here. Same thing with your roof. This is your high point. You might get a little coming around here. But use reference. As much as you can, use reference. And then once you see enough of it and you draw enough of it, it becomes a, a habit of, you know, of you doing it. It's like your signature, I always say. You, your signature, you've drawn your signature so much that you know how to do it without even thinking about it. And that's how these artists are when they draw, because they've been drawing, you know, for years and years nonstop. Um, it's just a natural thing for them to do, have it. Uh, I, always look, I always go off train of thought. So a suit, a suit is not gonna have a lot of wrinkles, just a good suit anyway, just basic around the arm, maybe some with the, the um, arm bends, and a little here but yeah any good suit will not have a lot of wrinkles just a few very few unless it's like really thin like that but when you make it black it becomes leather so just a few wrinkles folds i call them wrinkles and yeah that's gonna be it for that suit you know a good suit and anything anytime you draw a suit not like a t-shirt but it's it's right there a suit always comes down, way down like this, where it's sewn for the shoulders. It comes way down like that. It's just something, if you didn't know, if you don't have a suit, now you know it's not like t-shirts are basically square. But then you have your sleeves, and then you have your cut. Now you know how to draw a t-shirt. Whereas a suit is square, but you have your, your V cut, it goes way down like this and then it comes out and then your sleeves come down so you can lift your shoulders because most suits have shoulder pads on it to give you that you know more of a rugged look and a lot of guys they take the suits off they got these little baby shoulders so yeah i think that's going to be at 59 minutes so this is like an hour video which knowledge takes time it takes time so and if i forgot anything grass no, I'm just I'm just thinking now. Grass would be the same thing as your dog for me. It's just just going up, and it goes up into me. It goes up into this pattern like that, like that going out. So if you want to have grass, uncut grass anyway. Now if you want to have cut grass, you're gonna have to be able to do it, you know, and keep it cut. So. Keep it, keep it all the same. So if this is like grass, I'll have like a few sprigs of weed or something out like that. Maybe some kind of plant. But usually with grass or something like that, it's way in the background. Unless you're doing like close up and you have like a little bug, you're looking at some kind of little bug here. Somebody like, oh, let's look at the bug. I'll give it a few little rocks or something. And then with like bushes, I think I showed that before. I just kind of like, just crazy pattern like that unless it's close up I mean if it's far away you can do this and then if I want to add more detail I add more of these basically it's just this kind of like little water drops the closer you get the more you're gonna to have to put the more detail into it And then once I get enough of these, like I'll have more a shadow on one side and a um, light on one side, so I'll do less. And then in between this, 
I'll put the dark. I guess that would still be considered texturing. Texturing plants have textures. Now, that's more of a shadow, light and shadow. And then, as I say, I'll put some more light here. Less, less dark over here. Still going to be dark, or some shadow underneath some leaves, but not as much. Did you just, did you just unfocus on me? All right. So that's our, no, it's not an hour and 30, oh, 36 seconds. I just said an hour and 30 some minutes, just, just that quick. So ponder on that and then practice on that. You don't really need to show the texture on everything unless you're drawing from life. And unless it's really close up like this board, I just want to draw a board. I just, you know, chopping board or whatever. Then, okay. Yeah. Then you're going to, I have to put that pattern but if it's far back in the background where my two guys at where my guys at like this if it's far back in the background you're not going to need that because number one he's going to talk and he's going to talk so you have to remember um you have to leave room for your speech bubbles unless they're just staring at each other and then what happens if the news person talks breaking news and you use it like this so you, there's something else you're gonna have to remember if you're doing a comic you got you have to have your room for your speech bubbles. So don't try to draw a lot of detail on something because it's going to get covered up. Just know where your words are going to be and always leave room for your words. One last thing, since we're talking about comics, let me flip this over. Here's my panel. I know I want to have a guy here and I want to have a guy here. Depending on how much language they're talking, automatically I'm going to say, okay, his speech balloon is here and his speech balloon is there. So then I will plan, you know, my room or whatever. Here's my door, my clock over here, my window over here, window over there. So, you know, without having to draw all this texture and detail, but I know it's going to get covered up. Just food for thought. So, all right, so this is going to be it for this, this lesson. I have no idea what kind of thumbnail I'm going to do, but I'm going to have a thumbnail. Maybe this guy here with the wrinkled suit and busted up ball. We'll see. You'll see. Anyway, that's going to be it. So this is your lesson on texture. I'm about to ramble, so I'm just going to cut it. So, okay, lesson's over. Class is over. I'll see you guys in the next video.